Hey guys, Kevin Gain here with uh, Team Losi Racing for uh, episode four of In Touch with Team Losi Racing. And uh, this week we're going to talk about drive shafts. Uh, we're going to talk about the differences in drive shafts. We're going to talk about how, uh, a couple of things, how to build drive shafts. Um, we're going to talk about uh, some of the common mistakes that most people don't necessarily realize that uh, happen when building uh, drive shafts. But we're going to go over those things here this week in episode four. Um, first of all, if you guys got any friends or any buddies of yours that want to watch these videos, make sure you please tag them and then they'll be able to join in. Um, also, all these episodes are uploaded onto uh, the Team Losi Racing uh, YouTube page. That way, it's easily for pe easy for people to go back, watch the different episodes with different with the different uh, tech tips that we're talking about. Shocks like last week, it's easy to go back and uh, watch the videos. So, um, if you don't subscribe to that, please subscribe to the YouTube channel because it'll be easy for you to go back and reference the different uh, different videos that we're working on throughout each week. Um, so this week we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about drive shafts. Um, sounds pretty easy, you know. You build a drive shaft, put it in your car, and you use it, right? Well, there are some common mistakes that happen that most people actually don't even realize happen um, because you put the, the drive shaft into your car and you don't even notice it. Um, but you will notice something on the track when you're driving. So, first of all, let's go. I don't have an actual CBD with me because it's something we haven't used in quite some time. Um, but we're going to go through the different, uh, the different drive shafts. We're going to kind of give you a little details of what each one does and when they're most ideal um, and we'll go from there. So on one end of the spectrum we have a universal. This is a, a, an 8 scale universal. But if you see this, this is what an, a universal looks like. Um, that's universal. Um, this setup here is a CVA setup, if you can see that. Um, and now I'll show you an axle and a drive shaft. So, this is what you call a CVA, okay, where the axle has the cup on it itself. Now, a CVD, which is one I don't have, will be opposite. This cup here you see will actually be on the dog bone itself, and then the axle will have the what will have this end of the joint on the axle side. That's a CVD. Now, CVDs were something were basically always used back in the day, probably like. Oh, I'd say like maybe 2008 to 2010 and, and back was CVDs. Um, they were very popular back then because they have the most amount of lockup in the in the joint. And back when we ran rear motor, I believe, I don't have a really good sense of this, but I believe why they worked really, really well back then was because on a rear motor car, you had so much weight behind the axles that you really needed the axles to have a lot of bone support in them. I think that's, in my opinion, I think that's kind of why that they were popular. Now that we've kind of moved away, we've kind of gone to mid-motor cars. Um, things have developed past that. Um, the happy, well, first of all, we did use universals back in the day um, on really high bite kind of sugar tracks. That's where the universals back in the day would really, really work because they give the car a lot of corner speed. Um, there's no bind in them at all, so the car would just rotate through the corner and you'd get out of it and you'd, you weren't really looking for traction. Um, CVDs would give the car the most amount of grip as well, uh, forward drive. So the Happy Medium was a CVA, which is almost the same as a CVD. It's just built differently. You have the cup, like I said, this is a, a, a CVA setup right here. This is a, off of our SR kit um, so it's all lightweight aluminum dog bone um, now this is this does not quite give as much lockup as a CVD um, which I think that's why we've kind of gone to and, and this is the norm right now this is what most you know in the two-wheel drive world in even in the eight scale eight scale world CVAs is pretty much where we're everybody's at so this is the most common setup right now today um, now See, Universals is like the other far end of the spectrum. So Universals have no lockup at all. They're, they're the most free. Um, they're going to give your car the most corner speed. They're going to go through the bumps better because picture, as, as you know, the bones don't lock up. So your suspension is able to move when you're on the throttle, on power really hard. When you hit bumps, the suspension is able to move. When you have, when you run like a CVD or a CVA, 
those, when you get on the throttle really hard, those bones lock up in the joints and it doesn't allow the suspension to move as freely. Um, so that's where you get the most, you know, the most forward drive because the car can't squat down and it actually takes and puts the weight down onto the car and gets the car to drive forward. So that's why you have CVDs and CVAs for that real forward grip. Um, but like I said, they, they don't go through the, the bigger bumps as well. Um, but in two wheel drive, in, in 10 scale, um, CVAs is pretty much the most common thing. Universals don't develop enough traction today for, for any kind of real two wheel drive stuff. Um, so CVAs is, is pretty much common. You don't really, you know, adjust from that. Um, but there are some adjustments on the CV, the CVA that you can make in two wheel drive, which I'll show you here in a little bit later. So that's kind of a short walkthrough, um, on the different, uh, things. Um, Universals are, are definitely more commonly used in 8-scale. Um, it is definitely an adjustment in 8-scale because of the bumps. Um, but you, you will find when you run universals, your car is going to squat and kind of squirm around more. Um, you may end up, uh, you'll have to make some other adjustments to your car, like maybe go up in springs. Um, but they are very good when the track gets really, really bumpy. Or you need your car to carry more corner speed. What, where they will lack is um, they'll have a lot more turn in. Um, universals will, but as soon as you get to the middle of the corner and you're starting to pick up the throttle and exit the corner, you can find your car sometimes will do this kind of, you know, kind of make an S shape coming out of the corner. That's because the rear end has got no support when you hit the throttle. So it kind of dumps over and then it wants to kind of dump back as you're trying to counter steer out of it. So that's the one downside and that's where you have to be careful. There's give and take all the time with, with the, with the universals. Um, and, and CVAs on, on eight scale. So you have to find the combination and they are, I believe, track sensitive. So, um, it's something you do have to spend a little bit of time at the track yourself, um, on, in eight scale and kind of go back and forth and you have to have an understanding of how, how it works for you. Um, and then you'll know, like when you get into a situation at a particular track, um, when you will need to use it and when you won't. So yeah, it's a very it's a very handy tool. Universals and CVAs are are two very handy tools in the eight scale world. In the ten scale world, not so much. It's basically CVAs today. So you have a little less stuff to to worry about, you know, um, in ten scale. But there are some adjustments you can make to the to the uh, mm -hmm. to the CVAs that we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. But Let's get into, let's actually build a, a CVA right here. Um, I want to show you there, there are some very common mistakes that, that happen, um, and it's very easy to do. I, I actually learned this by myself because I did it 10 plus years ago, and uh, Dynamite actually showed me. He's like, hey, man, this is why your car's not handling very good. Uh, so it's very easy to do, and this is what happens. So I built one last night, and it, it, it happens by using too much Loctite. Um, and, and you can see, see the, see the bone here. Now watch, I'm going to flip it over and see how the bone's sticking up now. It should just fall down. It should be really free. There should be no friction, uh, nothing going on at all. And you can see this one's stuck. And that happens from using an excessive amount of Loctite. And you don't have to use very much to, to get too, too far with the Loctite. Um, but this right here, so what happens is you build your car the day before you go to the track, right? Most people work on their car the day before they go to the track or a couple days. And you build your, you build your CVA, you put it together, and you don't think anything of it because the Loctite's not dry yet, right? Everything's free. You're like, okay, everything's great. You put it in your car. You stay overnight. You go to the track the next day or the following day. And what you don't even know it because it's in your car, right? Well, this is what happens. Your CVA could be sticking like this and you don't even know it. Um... So that's why it's really it's real important to do the to put the Loctite in a certain way and and you can avoid this but like I said this is this happens all the time and it's very easy to do because it doesn't take much in, of Loctite at all um, to to when you put the screw in the Loctite goes in and kind of squishes through all the all the pins and this is what you get. So let's try and uh, build our CVAs here and, uh, and avoid this. So we're gonna build a set of CVAs here. Um, I use a little bit of black grease when you do this. Um, there is an adjustment with this black grease. Um, some people, sometimes, and some people prefer to build their CVAs dry. Um, 
and that just gives the more more lockup. So just kind of picture, you know, bind. You know, if you don't have lubrication, you have bind. And bind basically makes your suspension work less, which in times that works, that's good. Um, because like say you're on a flat track, it's kind of loose. Um, a, a, a CBA with more bind can work better because you get on the power, it locks up the suspension and it will just drive forward. And you'll have tons and tons of forward grip. So there are, there are times and you have to kind of find a balance. But for me, I like to always, the first time building them, put a little bit of block grease in here um, and and just kind of run them out. You know, I don't really re-grease them or do too much after that. I just kind of re-grease them one time and kind of run them out. That's how I like to do it. Um, it kind of feels consistent and I just, it, it seems to work. And that's kind of how the norm for most people. So I just use a little black grease. You just put just a little bit in here. Um, you can see, and then I'll take the tip of the black grease and kind of just run it through the hole a little bit just to kind of get the black grease, you know, all moved around. Now here's here's a, an important part. So now you have the barrel here that you're gonna, you're gonna put through the bone. So there's a hole on one side. I'm you not know, sure if you can see it here. There's a hole on one side for the set screw. This is for 10 scale. And there's no hole in the other. It's very important when you put the black grease in to use the, the solid side when you push it through. Otherwise, what happens is you push all the black grease into the hole that you're going to want to put your Loctite in. So then I just wipe off the excess black grease because you don't want really any excess black grease around. Otherwise, you're just going to collect dirt and then you're going to get uh, a really worn out. Uh, it's going to wear out really fast. So then, you know, just like normal, you're going to want to uh, take your axle, put it through here. You're going to want to put the pin through the axle, through the barrel, just like you normally would. So now you have your CVA put together. Now here's what I want to show you that I think is really important. Now this is putting the set screw in with the Loctite. And this is where there's a few common mistakes that happen. And I've seen this happen at the track. Um, so I've seen I've seen where where people have taken the the hole in the set screw and they put the the Loctite in the hole, and that's the first common mistake because then when you put the set screw in, you actually just push all the Loctite through all the pins, the barrel, and it just fills up the whole area in there with the Loctite, and that's when you get the bone locked. Now the other common mistake I see is they put Loctite on the. Whoops! Just drop the Loctite. Sorry guys. Sorry. So they put the Loctite on the top of the screw up here, the little flat spot. And then again, what happens is you put the screw in and it just takes that Loctite that's on the end of the screw and it pushes it through the pin and all the other stuff, all the, the, the barrel and everything in there. Because you have to remember, this screw is tightening against the pin. So any Loctite on that side, on the back side of the screw, or any Loctite on that side is going to get into that pin, and that pin is what makes, what rides on the barrel and everything. So that pin has to stay completely dry and clean of any Loctite. So what I do, it takes very little Loctite to really build one of these CVDs, uh, or CVAs. Um, I just put a little bit of Loctite, a dab on the bottom, of the screw, just like that. I'm not sure if you can see, but see how there's a, a pretty good amount of Loctite right there? Then what I do is I take my finger and I just take the screw and I run it along my finger, just like this. And you'll see when you're all done, the Loctite is in the threads. There's a very light film of Loctite that's just basically in the threads. That's more than enough Loctite to hold the screw together. And then what I do, is I like to pinch both sides of the pin. That way the pin stays uh, centered into the uh, outdrive cup and or uh, the axle cup. I hold it just like that. Take it, put the set, set screw in, and then tighten it down for a second and you are good to go.
nice and free. The Loctite you'll see will come out on the top side. There'll be a little bit of Loctite because now it's going to take it and it's going to screw it on those threads and it's going to push it out to the outside because the, all that Loctite was in the thread side. So now you just wipe it clean and I think it's really important to, to wipe the whole joint down as best that you can. Any grease, that's any, any grease that is uh, around the outside or in the cup isn't doing anything at all. It's just collecting dirt. The only spot that any grease is doing any good is internally inside on that barrel. So any excess of grease outside of that is, is just a waste and it's going to collect dirt and it's going to make your, uh, your whole CVA joint there. It's going to make it, uh, it's going to make it wear out really, really fast because it's going to collect dirt, turn to sandpaper. And the next thing you know, you have a wallered out joint. Um, these joints, if you keep them clean, they should last actually a pretty long time. You'd be surprised. Um, it is good common to, you know, each time you go to the track or whatever, just to kind of wipe them down and keep them clean, keep the dirt out of them. Um, and they will last longer. They do wear out really fast if you don't pay attention to them and you let them just get super sloppy. Um, so that's how, that's how you build it. Loctite super important to make sure that you're not putting too much Loctite in there. Otherwise you end up with something like this. And the next thing you know, like I said, you won't even know it. This will be in your car well before that Loctite's dry. You'll be at the track and you'll be wondering why your car isn't very good for the day. And uh, you know, you'll be wondering why I have no traction or whatever it might be that's affecting your car. But uh, it's a very common mistake. You'd be really surprised how often this does happen. So that's the process of building one. Super simple. You know, like I said, the most important part is the Loctite side. Um, now, in the kit, this is where you can make some adjustments on the CVA. Um, so, like I said before, a CVD is the most aggressive, the most lockup on power and off power. Um, a universal is the most um, free on power and off power. Um, now, a CVA, which is the most commonly used uh, drive shaft today in both 8 scale and 10 scale, now this one is right in between, you know, you're, you're, you're right in between a universal and a CVD um, as far as lockup and on power and off power. Now if you want to get closer to a CVD and get a little bit more lockup in the axle, um, that's basically, you can, add, well our, our kits come with these one millimeter shims, um, they're steel, they're black colored, they actually will go on to the axle just like this before you put it into the hub and that basically pushes this pin farther away from the outer pin of the hub and what that does is it, it increases the bind and that basically that gives you that pushes you more towards a CVA so you're going to have more lockup when you get on the throttle which means off power you're going to have more lockup so when you come into a corner the rear end is going to stay a little bit flatter um, and so forth. We don't use it too often um, in 10 scale. We normally run without the shim because, you know, most of the time, as you all know, we're, we're looking for the most amount of traction as we can in the middle, in the corner, um, side bite. And this here is going to take side bite away from the car, but it will add forward drive. So right when you're fully rotated through the corner, you get on the throttle, forward drive. If you like to drive your car very square, that's when this shim, this one millimeter shim here will help. Um, other than that, uh, if you want just overall traction um, every day, all the way around the track, no shim at all is the best way to go. Now I did put in the link up above in the, in the description, uh, our eight scale clutch bell shims. They are, I believe they're like 0.5 millimeters versus uh, a full one millimeter. And you can put those on here and you can fine tune this to however you like it. You can just add shims and I think we can add all the way up to 1.5 millimeters. I think what will fit, which is really, really aggressive um, for the amount of shims. It's going to have the most amount of your car is going to drive really, really flat. You're going to have, you're going to lose a lot of side bite um, and so forth. But so like I said, we don't really do that, but you have the knowledge now that you can do those kinds of things. You can add half mil shims. Um, all the way up to, I believe, 1.5 millimeters is what you can do. Um, 
So yeah, that's basically it. Um, you know, there's a lot of adjustments with these. Um, like I said, you can, you know, some people actually, uh, they, they use like a bearing oil and they will, they'll put bearing oil in this joint every single run. Um, and that will make it, it make it even more free. And that, that gets you in the realm of a universal. Not, it doesn't really get you very close to universal, but it's going in that direction of a universal by oiling this joint and keeping it greased. Um, with every single time you hit the track, which they do, people do do this, they oil it every, they just put a dot, a dot of oil in each one, um, every single time they hit the track and that will make the car freer. It'll have more rolling speed. It'll have more rolling grip, um, through the middle of the corner, but you're going to lose some out of the corner on power, direct straight line forward drive from the car by doing that. Um, so yeah, it'll, if you're, if the track's really, really bumpy, you might go in that way also by adding a little bit of oil in there. Um, now in eight scale, that is another big one. Um, I like, I don't like to use the oil in eight scale because like I said earlier, it, I mean, it collects dirt really, really quickly and, uh, it, it just kind of fades off really fast for how long, uh, eight scale mains are and qualifiers and such. Um, black grease is if you want to oil or grease your your CVAs in eight scale, um, I would suggest you know black grease than oil itself. Um, now in on a universal, you don't want to oil or grease them at all. You just put them together. Um, if you oil or grease them, they're going to get bound up and they're not going to work. I don't believe they'll work properly. So um, I don't suggest that for eight scale. So um, yep. Yeah. So. That's the little uh, tech tip for this week, guys. Um, let's get into some Q&As for a little bit. And if you guys got any questions, let's go over that for, for a short bit. Um, but I just wanted to, to give this one up, uh, a little info on the you know, drive shaft stuff because, you know, I've seen it happen here and there. And uh, it's a common mistake and we can definitely be better from it. So, but uh, cool. So let's see if you guys got any questions. If you got any questions right now, throw them in the comments. We'll have a little Q&A on some stuff. Um, I was going to do this from OCRC. We have the stock nationals, uh, we're starting today's practice all the way through Saturday. Um, but I was worried that the internet connection down there wouldn't be very good because every time I'm down there, it's kind of hit or miss and it takes a decent amount of internet to do these live videos. So I want to make sure we got a good video in for this week. And, uh, so next week we're going to have the silver state, which is going to be in Las Vegas inside of, uh, the South point hotel, which is going to be cool. I'm not sure how it's going to go. Uh, it's our first time there. So it'd be interesting, but I'm sure it'll be fun. Joey always puts a, a really good uh, event on. So I'm excited to see that. So, um, cool. Well, if you guys got any questions, like I said, throw them down here. We'll do a little Q and a on, uh, Q and a on everything. And, uh, We'll go uh, go from there, and then uh, we're, me and Dakota, we're going to head off to OCRC. All right. My local track is ruddy and has some moderate bumps, and I've come to really like the feel of the tuning kit universals. Yeah, Paul, if the track's really bumpy on 8 scale, universals are the way to go. I believe that. Um, we ran universals at Nitro Challenge in Dakota's car. They were really, really good. Um, you do you do have to kind of pay attention to how soft the car gets um, and stuff like that. But the the car can uh, the car can get a little dumpy if if you're really pushing the car when you put universals in. So you may have to go up in springs and different stuff like that. So um, yeah. So we got a couple questions here. Um, Frank says, when would you use shorter universals over the long universals for the rear of buggy? That's a very good question, Frank. So, uh, the shorter universals, which is changing where that pin rides versus the outer hinge pin, which totally makes all the world a difference of how that joint will bind up in within the, the geometry triangle Y or whatever it is. I'm not the engineer, but I talk to them. They kind of explain it to me and I take in what I can. Um, but the, the pin, so this pin here in the, in the universal, it's relative to where it rides to the pin in the hub. And that where it, where it rides is all in how 
it it reacts. So the farther out it is, the more bind it's going to have. The inner closer it is within that bearing rot area, the less bind it's going to have. So what we found in our testing, the rear one, the, the universal short versus the universal long, which is which the long is what standard is, right? Standard, everybody normally runs same length front and rear universals on their cars. Well, we found that we wanted to have a tuning option because we found that the short uh, universal was right in between a CVA and a universal. So it gave us more support. There was times in testing that that when we ran a full long one, the car just got like I was mentioning that that when you run a universal, the car can get very dumpy and aggressive and and not have enough support. And in our testing, we found there were multiple tracks um, that were higher speed and higher grip that um, the shorter one gave the car a, more, a little bit more support and we our lap times were faster. So, you know, it was, it was a toss up of what we wanted to do and we made the decision that it was best to come out with both options for the customer and for our team um, because we felt that if we got into a situation where, you know, the car was too dumpy but a CVA on, on a full long universal and the car wasn't um, was too bound up with a CVA. We needed something in between, and unfortunately, on our eight scale, you can't adjust like I was mentioning on the ten scale stuff with shims and adjust where that pin rides. In eight scale, we can't do that. So we had to make a different universal altogether to be able to get what we wanted. So that's the reason why. Um, from what we found for most tracks right now. Uh, the long universal is better, but there will be times with the track not as bumpy and very high speed and uh, high grip, the, the, the short universal can be better. So that's the differences between the two. Um, but right now, everything, I, like I said, uh, the long one for most tracks, because in the U.S., most tracks are are you know lots of jumps and stuff there's a lot of stuff happening so the longer one has been working the best so far so let's see there's definitely some more questions here um do you always put black grease in drive shafts um like I said, in, like I said when I was building it, not in ten scale. Yes, I believe in ten scale. You know, you should always put just a little bit of black grease in. Then when you build them, and for indoor, they're pr the tracks are pretty clean. They don't get really really dirty. Um, so you kind of run them, you know, the life of them once you build them the first time with gr with black grease. Now in eight scale, there's definitely two options. You can grease and you cannot grease. There are there are, there are guys that don't grease. And there are guys that grease. Um, if the track is bumpy and your your car is bouncing around a lot, you definitely want them greased. Um, if you don't grease them, then your car is going to not absorb any bumps when you're on the throttle. Because in eight scale, if you don't grease them, they they lock up really hard, and they're not going to absorb bumps. So if you're having a trouble with your car really bouncing around and kind of not really absorbing any bumps. Make sure that they're greased or make sure that they have some lubrication in them and you'll probably find that they'll be better. And I tell you what, here's a test for everybody. When you go to the track next time and you say your universals or, or your, uh, not your universals, but your CVAs, your, your drive shafts haven't been greased in a long time or they've never been greased, go out and run your car for five minutes, come in, just put a dab of oil. Like I said, grease is better, but just put a dab of oil on every single one of them real quick. Go back out and drive your car for five minutes. I bet you you'll be absolutely surprised how much different your car will handle that way. I think that's a really good test for everybody to go out there and try that. Um, so we got a couple more questions here, guys. Sorry, I have to keep reloading this thing here. Um, any plans for universals for Truggy? Um, Toby, I believe, you know, at some point we will. Um, we have to test it. We haven't tested it yet. Um, the Truggies handle a lot different from, than Buggies. 
and I don't know if it would be something that we would necessarily need for Truggy, but eventually I'm, we will be testing it, um, and we'll let everybody know how we like it and how it comes, uh, how it works. Um, so that thing's not working very well, guys. Sorry. Um, can you explain the correct way to set up sway bars if you can show a car? Steven, um, I don't have a car here with me right now. Um, but maybe we'll, you know, that's a good one to do a video on. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you guys have any, any videos that you guys want to throw in, um, that you'd like me to do, throw them in the comments below and, and I'll just, I mean, we're going to do this every week. So the more content and the more information that you guys want, we'll just, we'll just, I'll just keep pumping out videos on all this stuff. Um, but a quick, a quick overview of, of sway bars, um, you know, I don't have a car with me, but I'll give you just a quick little thing of what we kind of want to make sure on with, with building sway bars. So, uh, first of all, the one common mistake that I, we do see with sway bars is in the back of the sway bar where it mounts to the diff case, you have two 050 set screws that basically do the adjustment for each bar for the slop. Um, you want to make sure that there's no bind. You don't want to tighten those down to where they're actually hitting the sway bar and you can't move the sway bar left to right and it's it needs to be free. Um, you know, you don't want any bind in that. Um, commonly on the ends of the sway bar, you can adjust those to in and out to make them stiffer or lighter. Um, out would be lighter, in would be stiffer. Um, more, you know, basically more of the, the sway bar uh, the sway bar itself poking out of the, the link. Um, we normally run ours up with about an eighth of an inch sticking out and we tighten them down and that's kind of the norm of where we run them front and rear. Um, now the rear, we kind of want the rear sway bar to have a, a decent tight fitment, not a lot of slop on the front. Sometimes we'll loosen it up if we want more steering. The, those little 050 set screws will make them a little bit more sloppy in there and that'll give the car a little bit more steering because it will pick up the sway bar later on later into the travel. Um, the tighter they are, the sooner they're going to pick up the sway bar. So as soon as the car starts to roll, the sway bar is going to be active immediately. If you loosen those 050 screws a little bit, the sway bar will, ha will the, the car will roll into the travel and it'll pick up the sway bars a little bit later into the travel when when it rolls. So that's a little briefing on it. We'll do a video in the next coming weeks of sway bar stuff. I think it's a really good one to touch on. Um, there's a lot of details in there. There's a lot of different things we can change and adjust with those. So uh, we'll definitely do that. But kind of keep in mind on those set screws and different stuff like there, like I mentioned. Um, so my... Do you rebuild shafts? press pins out of them or just uh, go for new ones? Um, that's a good question. And, you know, back in the day, that was something we saw a lot of people do um, was pushing the pins out of the end of the drive shaft um, and pressing new ones in. I highly don't recommend that if you're a big time budgeted ra budget racer, you know, you can do it. Um, but when you do it, you want to put red Loctite on those when you press them in. Um, it's really, it's the only way I would suggest doing it. Um, you, so you can do it, but I don't highly recommend it because when you do do that, you, we find that when you press them in and then they heat up when you run, they heat, you know, they cool down, they heat up that, that metal kind of expands and, and becomes it. The next time you press them out and you press new ones in, they'll fall out. Um, and we've had it happen and we've seen it happen a bunch. Um, cause like I said, five, six years ago, there was a lot of people doing that. Um, and I don't see it as much today happening. Um, but if you're a budget racer and it's the only way you can put new stuff in your car, then yes, do it, but Loctite it with red Loctite, um, when you press them in and it will definitely help. So what is your opinion on running CVDs in the rear while sticking with universals in the front. Are you talking CVDs or CVAs? 
Uh, I assume you're saying CBAs because, like I said, most eight scales and most stuff today are all uh, CBAs. Um, we haven't played around with that a whole lot, so I don't have a lot of information on that. I have never played with that myself personally. I know testing with like Dakota and stuff like that. I don't believe you know that we've ever come across doing that or trying that. Um, if you were to ask me what it would do, I would say the rear is going to be, or the rear of the car is going to stay flat. The front of the car is going to want to roll around a little bit more. Um, you may get a little bit more steering from the front of the car, possibly. Um, but I don't have a lot of information on that one. I'd like to give you more, but maybe we'll test it here in the coming weeks or so, and we'll see what we come up with, and I'll let everybody know when we do, if we do. So... Uh, plants universals for Truggy. What do you always... Um, sorry guys, I'm going through the comments here. There's quite a few here. Um, you use shorter. We already went through some of these. So James says, I missed the beginning of the video. Not sure if this was discussed. If so, I will just back watch. But when would someone want to run CBA versus a universal in the two-wheel drive buggy? Um, so we haven't ran universals in two-wheel drive buggy in maybe three, four years. Um, we used to run universals at like Cactus when it was outdoor and at Hot Rod when it was, you know, an outdoor track on um, sugar, sugar tracks. That's when we always ran universals. We never ran anywhere other than that. Anything indoor, anything that you needed the car to actually have traction, we never ran universals. Um, they take a lot of grip out of the car, uh, like on throttle grip out of the car. The only time that they help develop any grip is off power because the car will roll more, get into the track, and you know, entering in mid corner, it will help with grip. But um, anything on the, anytime you're on the throttle at all, the, the rear is not going to have any traction at all. So, um, you know, it might be something to try and carpet nowadays. I don't know, um, but I don't think so. I think with the mid motor cars, you need the car to have more support in it. So. Um, I don't think a universal would work with a with a mid motor and in those conditions. Um, but we might we I mean carpet would be my biggest one to maybe want to go try it on, but I'm not sure. Right now, I mean I think the CVAs, the whole drivetrain, the whole rear the, these rear ends of these cars are all working today. Um, I wouldn't I I wouldn't really uh, expect universals to to be the the ticket right now. So yep. Are there plans for an ATE? So, like I've always said with these videos, you know, obviously there's certain things that we can't can't bring up, but you know, like I've always said, we're Team Losi Racing is fully committed to all the segments of everything that we we race, and that's true today. I mean, we've been testing the last three, four days straight. Um, like I've said, I mean. We are fully committed to everything that we're doing. I mean, things take time and all the above, but we're, we're committed. Uh, with the new LLRC rear end for the eight buggy, do you recommend running the universal or CVA? Um, it's the same. So the LLRC is just changing the roll center in the rear of the car. It's lowering the roll center. Um, it has not really to do with universals or CVAs. Um, but yeah, so like the last time I went and ran my car, I ran universals. I went up in springs to blue and yellow of our new Evo springs. And I uh, was working with Ryan Dunford. You know, I was always really liking CBAs on my car, which is standard what comes with our car. Um, Dunford had been telling me how much better the universals were. Uh, JR Mitch also has been telling me, you know, he really likes the universals on our eight scale. 
and I went out and I tested it and I had to make some changes. We went to uh, a, the longest camber link on the hub that we can, we can get and we went up to blue and yellow uh, springs on the 8 scale, the new Evo springs and universals were unbelievable. I mean, it, it's, uh, they were really, really good. I was really happy with them. The, adding the, the camber link support and the springs really helped the car come back and have that same feel of the support when you were driving it. But the universals were still doing their job by, by making the drivetrain super, or making the suspension really free on throttle. So it start, would absorb, absorb all the bumps, um, all the small bumps and, and the bigger bumps. So, uh, for me, it was a plus, but you can't just put, you know, you can't be out there running your car with CBAs come in, put universals on your car, go back out and everything's going to be perfect. You have to make some other changes to the car to, to make them work. So a lot of people, a lot of people I know, like they'll, they'll put something on their car and they'll be like, they'll run it and they're like, oh, that wasn't good. But maybe, you know, you have to kind of play with a few other things to make it better than what you had before. So that's really what we did. And, and I was happy with them. I thought the car was really good with them. Um, and like I said, we went to the, the longest camber link on the rear hub and we put blue and yellow uh, Evo springs on. And that was the two changes uh, that we made before we were at green and I think orange on the rear spring. So we, we basically went up one spring rate around the car and it was it was good. So I suggest giving it a try. <sighs> Let's see, is there a new setup sheet for carpet in uh, testing the other day? Kevin and I are going beach line and run carpet next week and currently we're running the kit setup. Um, yeah, I think for the most part, uh, Frank is going to be working on getting the setup sheet put together um, with the stuff that we're running. And there's definitely a lot of... Uh, a lot of stuff we learned. Um, the car was amazing at the end of the, the end of the day. So, um, but Frank's gonna be working on it. It's gonna take a little bit of time because there's a lot of different little things that we were playing with, and we gotta kind of download everything still. So I don't think we'll have anything out this week or maybe next week, but uh, we should have some stuff uh, pretty soon. Um, but I will say I was I'm not a carpet guy. I haven't driven carpet very much or really at all. Um, I was pretty shocked with how easy the car was to drive and how fast the car felt. Um, Dakota was on rails. Um, so I was pretty, I was really happy to be honest with you with the, the two days we spent there. So, um, I wish you could buy emulsion style gaskets for the shocks without the caps. I've heard a lot of people say this too. I know you can cut bladder, but I also wish you could buy. A couple of flywheel collars. Hmm. So Kevin, um, let me, let me look into that. I'm not sure. I I haven't even noticed that you couldn't get the gaskets without the, the shock caps, and so I'll bring that up to Todd. I'll, I have a meeting with him next week. I'll, brought, I'll bring that up to Todd, and we'll uh, go over that and see what we can do to maybe make those gaskets separately than the than the uh, than the caps. And the shock collar, I believe, unless we got rid of it, I believe you can buy the collar. I've always got it before without the collar. I'll look up the part number and see if I can find it. Maybe we change it. I'm not sure, but yeah, I agree with you on that. Um, I'll look into those two two items for you for sure. So, all right, guys. Well, I think we've had a pretty good week. I think we have some good questions. If there's, you know, while I'm chit, chit chatting here, if you got a couple more questions to throw them in there, let me know. Um, but like I said, you know, we're gonna do this every week, guys. I'm super pumped on doing these things. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, like I said, all this stuff gets uploaded to the YouTube channel. Um, there's a, a playlist for it in the YouTube channel for the in touch with uh, TLR So all the episodes that we're doing can be easily gone back looked over checked out and uh, Yeah, so appreciate it guys. We're gonna head off to the stock nationals at OCRC and have some fun and uh, Make sure you're not over lock tight in your uh, Your universals and your CBAs. It makes a huge difference. Like I said, you won't ever know it if you uh, 
did it wrong. So make sure you're doing that. So cool. Uh, thanks. I've heard both from a lot of people. People would like to them. Yeah, Kevin, like I said, Kevin, I'll check into it for you, buddy. Um, we'll check it out. We'll see what we can do. And uh, yeah, well, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend of racing. If you're not at the Stock Nats, uh, have a good weekend of racing wherever you're at. If you are at the Stock Nationals at OCRC this week or at Silver State next week, come make sure you say hi. Come hang out with the team. We'll go to lunch, whatever. But uh, cool. See you guys. Thank you very much. Later.